Have you seen the same trend in this market? These, these companies have a larger degree of exposure to technology, so eventually we would expect uh, that new reality to be reflected in private markets as well. And also in China, your company has seen a substantial increase in the total amount of US dollar funds raised. What is the reason for this change? And that's really reflected in the fact that um, we do still have quite robust international investor appetite for uh, Chinese private equity and venture capital. And what other trends do you expect will happen in the Chinese PEVC market? An increased uh, participation of retail and high net worth investors into the market. And this, this will be um, uh, an interesting development going forward. Do you think this is a good time for investors to get into this market? It certainly is. Mr. Joyce, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The global market frustrated sharply in this year. We have seen this in the stock market, fixed income, and also the commodity market. Your company has done a lot of research in the PE and the VC market. Have you seen the same trend in this market? Yes, yeah, so that's an interesting question because, as you say, we've certainly seen a great deal of, of market volatility globally. And uh, I think that this has particularly hit technology stocks. I mean, we obviously know what's happening in Ukraine, um, which is impacting sentiment. Uh, we've also seen higher interest rate expectations at the start of the year. And that started to actually materialize as well with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. And of course, we're expecting further hikes going forward as well. So the market is, the global stock market is going through a process of of repricing a lot of assets, and that's particularly affecting technology stocks. Now, of course, for the private side, if we look at private equity and venture capital, um, these, these companies have a larger degree of exposure to technology. So eventually we would expect uh, that new reality to be reflected in private markets as well. But I think the advantage that private markets have is that they are comparatively insulated against shorter term stock market volatility, because of of course, fund managers are not required to mark positions to um, where they are, where they are in private markets, in public markets, um, and at the same time, private equity managers, venture capital managers have a much longer term horizon, so they're, they're less concerned about um, near term shifts in sentiment. But how much do you think the short term market volatility will be? Uh, I, th I think that volatility in, in the near term, um, obviously, it won't affect private markets in the same way that it will affect public markets. I think that in China, obviously, we have um, have a slightly different cycle to what we're seeing globally. It looks to me like the uh, we're closer to the bottom in China, and we may, may start to see um, the start of a new private equity cycle as well. And also in China, your company has seen a substantial increase in the total amount of US dollar funds raised. What is the reason for this change? That's absolutely right. And that's really reflective of the fact that um, we do still have quite robust international investor appetite for uh, Chinese private equity and venture capital. And, um, and, and relatively speaking, R&B fundraising has come down. So um, I, I, think, I think overall, if you, if you look at the structure of the market, the R&B um, AUM, assets under management for the entire private equity and venture capital market will continue to be uh, R&B denominated. But we'll see, uh, I think, a, a healthy contribution from USD funds as well going forward. Let's talk about sectors. What industries are favored by the PEVC market investors? I think um, if, if you look at the composition of, of deals over time, it's, it's quite well diversified. There's uh, venture capital. If you look at the total, uh, actually, if you look at the total private capital markets in China, Venture capital makes up um, a large portion of the total. I mean, there's $1.3 trillion worth, US dollars worth of um, private capital AUM in China that, that we track at Prequin. And of that, $645 billion worth is in venture capital alone. So I, th I think that really just reflects the, the innovation that's taking place in the economy. And that's a relatively high portion compared to um, the markets that we see globally. Now, in, in terms of where those investments are being deployed. I mean, we're seeing um, a great deal of interest in the healthcare and biotech space. And I think there's some very strong structural underpinnings for the growth stories in these sectors. 
Um, I, I think that um, in the near term, we're going to see a more challenging environment for uh, consumer facing names. But again, it, it's something where we, we see very strong um, you know, structural growth going forward. So um, I, I, th I think generally speaking, um, it's, it's a very broad range of, of, um, of investments that are being made. And what other trends do you expect will happen in the Chinese PEVC market? As I mentioned before, we think that the outlook for private equity secondaries is quite bright in China. We think that it's coming from a relatively no, low base of activity. And uh, as I said, I mean, this is really a natural occurrence of when the market scales and becomes more mature, you, you start to see more secondary um, private equity activity. And that's good for both LPs and GPs because we've, we've obviously had a lot of funds that launched a few years ago, which is starting to approach the end of their lives. Um, now, um, the exit environment is quite challenging. So I think uh, secondaries funds give uh, LPs and GPs a lot more flexibility in terms of what they want to do going forward. I think as well, um, a trend that we're seeing globally, but also in China, is that there's an increased uh, participation of retail and high net worth investors into the market. And th this will be um, uh, an interesting development going forward because traditionally, private equity and venture capital has been reserved for uh, primarily institutional investors. And um, I think there's a recognition uh, now that the traditional 60-40 portfolios of equity, public equities and bonds no longer functions. And, and there's this increased demand for private market exposure, which is feeding through not, not just institutional investors, but also private investors as well. So I think um, they are two, two distinct trends that we'll see play out. I think in the longer term as well, I mean, I mentioned the structure of uh, the Chinese private equity venture capital market. Um, in, in global markets, it's typically the larger buyout strategies, leverage buyout strategies that make up a large portion of the total AUM. Um, however, in China, uh, buyout funds are still a comparatively small portion of the total. And we've seen, uh, as we discussed, more um, activity in venture capital, but also growth equity. I think in the longer term, uh, we can expect more activity from leveraged buyout funds as well um, as, as they start to see more, more traction going forward. Why do you think there is an increased interest from retail investors in the PEVC market? It's a good question. I think, as I said before, that there are certain attractions to the um, private equity and venture capital market in the sense that you're able to access opportunities earlier in the process. Um, obviously, by the time companies become publicly listed, um, then they are comparatively mature and perhaps much of the upside is, is really left with, with private managers. So I think the opportunities are there, and I think the, the investment case is, is quite compelling. I think the challenge really for, for retail investors and wealth management, wealth managers in particular, is that um, private investments are obviously uh, much more challenging for uh, investors to understand. They are more complex, there's a lot of more complicated terms, there's less liquidity. So I think that um, retail investors need to be very careful about how they, they gain exposure, but I think that there's an increasing array of options for, 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 um, for retail investors to access the market. Do you think this is a good time for investors to get into this market? I think um, it, it certainly is an, an interesting time for investors to be, um, if, if you look globally, uh, I mean, obviously we, we don't have any particular forecast for what's going to happen in the short term, but valuations have, have obviously corrected and come down to a lot healthier levels. and. Um, the, the long term, the structural fundamentals underpinning uh, many of the technologies that venture capital companies tend to back are still very, very strong. I think what we've seen really is a change in the price that investors are willing to pay for those companies. So for, for investors who are, um, are looking at things carefully, I think there will be opportunities. And, and particularly in China, uh, as I said, there are some macro headwinds that are affecting China as they're affecting the global market as well at the moment. But I think patient investors um, looking for opportunities will, will, will find um, interesting ones in the present time. And it's worth noting as well that the sell-off in Chinese technology stocks happened a lot earlier than what we saw in the US. So in many respects, we could be a lot closer to the end of the cycle there.